one of the challenges with escaping planets, there was a, a fun paper one of my colleagues wrote that suggested that super Earth planets may be inescapable. Mm -hmm. If you're a civilization that were born on a super Earth, the surface gravity is so high that the chemical potential energy of hydrogen or, or methane, whatever fuel you're using, simply um, is at odds with the with the gravity of the planet itself. Mm -hmm. And so you would, uh, you know, our current rockets, I'm not sure of the fraction, but maybe like 90% of the rocket is fuel or something by mass. These things would have to be um, like the size of the, the Giza pyramids of fuel with just a tiny tip on the top in order just to escape their planet's, planetary atmosphere. And so it has been argued that if you live on a super earth, you may, be, you may be forced to live there forever. There may be no escape unless you invent a space elevator or something, but then how do you even build the infrastructure in space to, to do something like that in the absence of a successful rocket program? Um, and so the more and more we, we look at our earth and think about the sorts of problems we're facing, the more you see things about the earth which make it ideally suited in so many regards. It, it's almost spooky, right? That we not only live on a planet which has the right conditions for life, for intelligent life, for sustained fossil fuel industry just happens to be in the ground. We have plenty of fossil fuels to, to get our industrial revolution going. Um, but also the chemical energy contained within those fossil fuels um, and hydrogen and other fuels is sufficient that we have the ability to escape our planetary atmosphere and planetary gravity to have a space program. And we also happen to have a celestial body, which is just within reach, the moon, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't also necessarily have to be true. Were, were the moon not there, what effect would that have had on our aspirations of a space program in the 1960s? Would there have ever been a space race to Mars or to Venus? It's a much harder, certainly for a human program, that seems almost impossible with 1960s technology to imagine ever so, come to fruition. It's almost as if somebody constructed a set of uh, challenging obstacles before us, challenging problems to solve. They're mm -hmm. challenging, but they're doable. And there's a sequence of them. Gravity is very difficult to overcome, but we have, given the size of Earth, it's not so bad that we can still actually construct propulsion systems that can escape it. Yeah, and the same with climate change, perhaps. I mean, climate change is the next major problem facing our civilization, but we know it is technically surmountable. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it is, does seem sometimes like there has been a series of challenges laid out yeah. to um, progress us towards a mature civilization that can one day perhaps expand to the stars. I'm a little more concerned about nuclear weapons, uh, AI, and uh, uh, natural or artificial pandemics. But yes, climate yeah, well, change. There you go. I mean, plenty, plenty of <laughs> plenty of fun milestones that we need to cross, uh, and we can argue yeah. about the severity of each of them. But uh, <laughs> there is no doubt that we live in a world that has serious challenges that are pushing our intellects and our will to the limit of whether we're really ready to progress to the next stage of our development.